So uh, Google Classroom, okay. thank you for coming. Google Classroom, Dominic's all about Google, but Google Classroom I absolutely love. Of all the things that I love about Google, Google Classroom is the best. It lets me be able to work with 700 and some kids and actually read their stuff and collect it and grade it and answer their questions and be able to differentiate for 700 kids. Now I'm not saying that I'm wonderful or anything like that, but let me tell you that I will pull my hair out and be gone if I had to do that with paper because there's no way. So it just makes things so much easier. Um, you can go to the next slide. So what is Google Classroom? It's by definition, <coughs> by definition, Google Classroom is a blended learning platform developed by Google for schools that aims to simplify creating, distributing, grading assignments in a paperless way. That's a huge definition. And what I tell the kids is that Google Classroom is our, vir our, our virtual classroom. It's like coming into my room and having a library and all the materials you need to teach all in one place. But they can access it from anywhere. And what I do, you, you can use it however you like, but what I do is I make everything available for each lesson in Google Classroom, they can access it. I don't use textbooks or paper in my classroom. You can use it however you like to use it, and there's a lot of different ways people use it, but that's for me. Okay, so it's a simplification of paper, and you can also uh, create assignments, announcements, homework. Um, you can also collect their work that way. So that's what Google Classroom is. Today's targets. You will be able to understand Google Classroom can be used in your classroom. You will be able to set up a Google Classroom for your students, and you will be able to post announcements, assignments, or other information in your Google Classroom. Okay, now, one of the things that I think is important, and you're going to do this in a minute, is sign into Google Classroom. And whenever I'm doing a presentation like this, I like to show you how I teach the kids to do it. The reason is because there's a million ways to do it. But if you're working with a group of students and they already have some um, experience of Google Classroom, and even third grade teachers, as the kids are coming up, first and second grade kids are using Google Classroom in my classes. So they have some experience, but they're not experts. So if you understand the same way they do it and follow that, it makes it a little easier when you're trying to guide them through it. Does that make sense? Okay. So. This is how, and you have this whole presentation inside your um, classroom. The usernames and passwords, these are for the kids. Yours is your username, um, is your email address, your password, is whatever you decide it to be. So to sign into Google Classroom, start out with the URL, classroom.google.com. I always have the kids type in the URL. The reason is because when they go home and they want to use this, and that's the whole idea of using a cloud-based program is that they could use it anywhere. If they're looking for an icon, it's harder to find. If they Google the word classroom or Google classroom, they get a whole list of things and they have to decide what it is and sometimes they get it directed <coughs> to other schools or whatever. So the best way, I think, is to type in classroom.google.com. When we're done, and I'm going to show this to you also, it's really important, especially with the students that are using shared computers, if you have a computer that nobody else ever uses, it's not as important. But it's really important when we're sharing computers to make sure that you sign out of Google and then remove your account from the computer. Sometimes what will happen is, especially if you share computers at home, I've gotten requests from people to um, be able to view or edit a document that I've shared with my class. And it's strange names. What happens is if a student or anybody logs onto a com or goes onto a computer that someone else has already logged into in Google and tries to access a document that they by right have the uh, permission to access, it's going to come up that they don't have access because the other person has signed in. It. The computer itself is looking at the, the original sign in. Does that make sense? So always remove the accounts and then you won't have that problem. Um, and at, in this presentation, you'll see when we get into Google Classroom that there's uh, links here. 
that last link is a great tutorial and videos for everything we're going to do today. Okay? Now, you can give them back control. So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to have control of your computers. Open Google Chrome and go to Google Classroom. All right, so when you get into Google Classroom, some of you already have Classroom, some of you don't. The Classroom that we're going to join, Don, I think you're already in it, a couple of you are already there. This is the join code. If you have not uh, before joined one of the classrooms, the training classroom, please join that now until your students will do this. As a student, you will... I'll have to do that again. You don't have to do it because you've already done it. But when you have a student join a class, they click on the plus sign on the black stripe across the top, and it'll ask for a join code. Once they join, that's, they only have to do this part once. Once you join, you join. And some of you notice that you get um, notifications if you go in at a time or if I add something. And that's just a notification telling you <coughs> that something was added to that class. You don't have to do anything about it. Uh, with the training class, I try to put everything in there. Dominic and I add things to it so that it's available to everyone. So don't be upset if you, something goes in there. It's just where it's going. And there's a history, so you can go back and look for answers to questions that we might have covered in a previous um, training. Everyone good? I think everybody's there. Yeah, so, okay, go ahead. Dominic, so take over. Yeah, just so, uh, who here has opened or started a Google Classroom themselves already? Most people. That's good. And I know some people don't have, you don't have Chromebooks yet. I know. Next year. Next year. <laughs> that's good. That's good you're here. So, okay. and this can still be useful for you this year, too. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, just so you know, Tracy, I use Google Classroom with all my first and second graders. They don't have Chromebooks either. But if you're having them use, I mean, you could do it on an individual basis as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing small groups, and I'll show you how to do this in a little while, you might have an assignment for, you know, like um, a reading assignment that you want to give for four students. Yeah. You can actually do that, and they can access it on whatever um, it is that you have. Yes. Okay. Yep. They can access it at home. You could do it, anything that we're doing, you could do with them. Okay. So you can Great. use those laptops. Mm -hmm. I know that's... The tab right now. <laughs> um, the join code was two elf something. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, two elf three one. So I know that the, the laptops in the third grade hall are rough. Yeah. The wireless connection in that hallway is not great. That was a surprise for us this year, as far as switching hallways. So, yeah. Uh, but David's there to help if something's go down. We're gonna we're trying to bring more access points into that hallway. But that would be great for like centers if you have like I don't know. Do you guys use the split carts or just the big one? Um, both. Both. Okay, that's perfect. So if you bring one in there for like small groups, mm -hmm. like Maria says, you can still use Google Classroom. So okay. I know that a lot of people do have Google Classroom, which is good. So uh, some people have been through the trainings me and Joel have done, which is a great four-hour training. That is just so thrilling at the end of the year, right before summer. So I'm sure everyone retains all that information. So the three tabs of Google Classroom are About, Students, and Stream. And they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, the About tab is the least likely used. Uh, it's pretty much one of those like set it and forget it kind of tabs. You can add a co-teacher here. You can see on the left they're, side. They're looking as, as students right now. This yeah. is what their students will say. So it's yeah. going to look a little different from mine. Yeah. So, Maria's screen is the teacher, you guys are just the students. Um, but just so you see the About tab, Maria can add class materials and you can add like a syllabus or, I know you've added stuff before in the last training we were talking about this. Um, anything that you just think this needs to be, needs to be viewed, like a syllabus, uh, class materials, a supply list, anything like that you can just put right in an About tab and they can, you can just leave it there for the entire year. On the left side, you can see Maria's got a, a screen, and then Joel's pretty face is there. And you can invite teachers to the bottom here. 
So if you do, if you are in a classroom that has co-teachers, or you are the co-teacher, uh, that's where your uh, homeroom teacher or what about your yeah. You, so you just start typing whoever you want to invite. Name comes up, invite, and then uh, I'll get an invitation in my email that says, "Hey, Maria wants me to join this class. I'm grayed out now, but if I accept, I'll turn uh, not gray." <laughs> so. That's a basic part of the About tab. Uh, you can do things with Google Calendar, which we probably won't get into today. Uh, but just know that any assignments or anything you, you put into Google Classroom for your students, there is a calendar that's made. So eventually you could link your <coughs> classroom calendars to your teacher website so your parents can see uh, upcoming assignments. So that's really like a future ideas of what you can do, but just to, just so you're aware that there is a calendar automatically created when you create a, a classroom. And there's no restriction on how many classrooms you want to make. So we've had, I know we've had you questions in the... Oh yeah, Maria's got tons. Tons and tons and tons and tons. So I know we've got questions in the past on, <coughs> I want to do um, small group, should I make classes for each small group? Should I have uh, one big class? It's really up to what you want to do. There's no limit for on tech side to like limit you guys like there was on uh, like document storage where you get a message that says like you're out of space. So whatever you guys want to do, just go for it. Um, if you want to have a classroom per uh, per social studies, math, whatever you want to do, uh, up to you. Um, and we can talk about how we go into the next year so you don't have 50 classes from this year and then you make another 50 from next year and then your screen's blown up with 100 classes. We'll, we'll get into that. So the next tab is just the students tab. And you can see everyone's joined here. And you can find everyone's name. There's Tracy. Everyone who had that join code is going to show up in this list. So what you guys did when Maria had the code on the, the uh, screen for you is exactly what your students are going to do. They come in with their Chromebooks. They open them up. They, you know, signing them in is going to probably take five to ten minutes if they know what their birthday is. And, uh, which is a struggle, I'm sure. And then once they are signed in, which is good, then you get the class code, they sign in, awesome. So the big question is, hey, I'm a week into the, into the class, I have a new kid, how do I get him into my class? Um, so this, this class code will always stay the same unless you disable it. And I know it's kind of small, so I'm gonna try to get a little bigger. But you can see you can display it, you can copy it, you can reset it, or you can disable it. After the first day, I would disable it just in case uh, Johnny from next door decides to ask his friend what your class code is, and then you find Johnny's in your class, making comments on your assignments. So you can disable it, which is graze it out, and then when you, if you have a new student come in a month later, or two months later, you just go right to the students tab, hit enable, it makes a new class code, and he just joins that. So it's not a problem adding or removing students at all. Uh, if you have a student that transfers out or anything like that, it's not, that's not a problem. The big, two big things on this, the students tab right here. Students can post and comment. Students can only comment and only teachers can post and comment. You can do whatever you want. I just want to warn you that when it says students can post and comment, it means students can post and comment anything they want, on anything they want, whatever they want. So you can still monitor what they're doing. You can mute a kid if he's being a little rowdy. So there are ways to like uh, shut it off for one student and not punish the whole class. Um, but just be aware, you know, it, this is very fluid. You can go from one to another within the same day. So you're not going to break anything in, in Google Classroom. Just so you know that if it says students can post a comment, and if you can go on our stream right now and say, you know, this lesson is terrible, and it would just show up for everyone. So just be aware of that. And then the big thing we're seeing now with Google with their big push of going paperless is the invite guardians. So this is the, the newest thing they've introduced into Google uh, Classroom. So I know that Harker has Friday folders, correct? Mm -hmm. And Hill has Friday folders. Does everyone have Friday folders? All right, so invite guardians. So the biggest thing here is they, they get a summary. Um, it's hard to show you what they get because you have to email you don't see what they check, if that makes sense. So you just say, hey, I'm going to 
push this slider button, I know it's hard to see, this little slider button, it enables the feature, and then you start in, uh, it says invite guardians on the student's name, and then you just type in, you know, at gmail.com. Wow, that's not even close. But you get the point. Email that, uh, whatever it is, you know, you can solely, whatever it is, dot com. You click invite. As soon as you click invite, that parent gets an email that says, hey, your teacher has invited you to look at your, your child's work. Would you like daily updates, uh, weekly updates, or I think monthly updates? So the parent is able to see all of the child's work? Yes, yeah, so they not can see. Like any communication between students back and forth? No, they just any, see. Like if we put a like a resource on there, like a video or something that the student could use. I they believe wouldn't see that. that. It would yeah. just be yeah, sure. submitted um, work by the student. This is two minutes long. Yeah. Okay, so one of the links I gave in that presentation is for this website. And it has all kinds of stuff in there. Make that louder. In this video, you will explore the Guardian Email Summary feature for Google Classroom. This feature allows educators to connect parents to a summary where they can see their child's missing work, upcoming assignments, and recent classroom activity. In order for parents to get access to this summary, they must be first invited by the classroom teacher. Teachers, while you're in Google Classroom, you will select the Students tab. From there, you can see the Guardian Email Summaries section. You want to turn this option on. The dialog box allows you to add all the classes you teach to the Guardian Email Summary, or you can uncheck that and just add this current class. Once you've done that, just scroll to the student that you would like to add the parent information for. and click on Invite. The parents will receive an email giving them the option to choose daily updates, weekly updates, or if they want to opt out from receiving any summaries. I will show you what it looks like from a parent view. So the parents will get an email. In the email, they can click on Accept. By default, they're able to receive a summary for their child weekly, but they can also change it to daily. I'm going to keep it on weekly. This is how educators can invite parents using the Guardian Email Summary feature in the classroom. So yeah, not, not, not monthly, I was wrong. No summaries. So some of them might sit, hit no summaries. And then later on, they probably want to get yeah. summary. So, yeah. When you type in that email, are you typing in your email or their email? The their parents, email. The parents they, email. So you yes. have to know their email. Yes. Yeah. But sometimes, and I'm not sure how it happens, but I because I have so many classes, I'll pull up. I have kids that have gotten them, or their emails, their parents' emails are there already. So I'm not sure how that happened, how they migrated there, but they are available there. So <coughs> I think it's once they're in there. Right. And I think that somewhere along the way, if they start at the lower grades, it goes with them. Okay. All right, so this is, a, this is the answer to your question. Okay. So, let me zoom up on this thing. So, this is what they'll receive in their summaries. Okay. I know this is, wow, that is, there we go. There we go. All right. So, missing work, upcoming work, and class activity. So, those are the only things. So, if they, if they do, like, if you have, like, a comment section, and they're talking about something, your, your parent, I don't think, will get any of those. Right, they'll just see, like, what my yeah. post was. Yes. Yeah, this is really, I don't know. It's basic. Yeah, and I'm not sure exactly what your Friday folder entails, but I'm sure this could help with some of that, Yeah. But not no, all of it. <clears throat> like, the PLC I'm in for fifth grade, we're trying to figure out how to make some of our math assessments um, all digital. Digital? Online, yeah. yeah. Um, because, you know, we could pick a standard. It would all be on that one standard. Mm -hmm. They get on there, they get it done. It's graded by Google Forms, like that kind of thing. We're working um, on that now. So I'm thinking, like, if we could use 
something like this where we yeah. invite the guardians to see the assessments. Yeah, and but then there's something like you know, like chat is not always open, but if it were, you don't want to see, you know, have a parent, well, how come this kid said that? You know, yeah, that kind of yeah, thing. Oh, exactly, see that. Yeah. Um, so at least that's something that's not available to see. And um, it's really only their child's work that you're seeing. Yeah, that's pretty much the only things they can see right now. I would assume that Google's going to continue to update this and make it a little more yeah. robust. Mm -hmm. This is fair. This is within within a year old, so they're going to make it a little better as as um, it continues to grow. But it's a really good starting place, mm -hmm. especially if and you don't have to do your whole class. You saw in that video that lady just picked one kid. So there's just one kid that says, "Hey, my student uh, isn't doing homework or something like that. Can I get?" A summary report just to see what he's supposed to be doing or she's supposed to be doing. Um, that happens a lot. I mean, my wife has to do that a lot with mm -hmm. Google. So that is something that, that you can definitely do. So does anyone have any questions about the About or the Students tab? Those are like the two just information tabs. I know they're just like information dump. But those are just kind of starting points. So if you don't want to do the guardians in your classroom, it's pretty much just invite with the code, and that's it. You don't have to do anything else. But if you want to get more in depth, you can definitely do an about tab with some syllabus stuff or class materials, um, a shared folder that you have for them. You can do a whole bunch of stuff if you really want to. But if you just want to do basic, quick, you just invite them, and that's it. You just see them. And you can click a kid. There's an actions tab up here where you can um, uh, remove the kid if they are transferred out or mute them if they're commenting on things you don't want them to. And I will mention just and one thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, you're good. It just says they can still submit their work. Mm -hmm. They just can't comment on things. So just because you mute them doesn't mean they're exempt from homework. What yeah. if you put only you can post or comment? Then they can comment. Right. Only, right? And right. that's where I was just going to go with that. I, with my classes, allow all the students to comment or post. And I do that because I want to teach them digital citizenship, and that's part of my curriculum. It, and I get emails every time they post. And most of the time it's nonsense. But a lot of times there's some really good comments or questions. And kids know that I can answer them. So, or that I will answer them, I should say. So I find that to be a really good tool. However, there are students at times that I need to mute. I don't mute the whole class unless it's a whole class issue, which I don't usually have to do. But there are students that I mute. Yes? If they post something and then they delete it, do you still can you still see that they yes get one time? we can always go back and get yeah. anything. The one thing is that I always make sure that I'm notified of any posts, so I will always have that, and it tells me in my the email just like that one that um, he just showed us. It tells you exactly what they said most of the time, and I will say that the, the kids know I'm monitoring them, so I answer them right away. Uh, some of them I'll say, you know, stop the nonsense. Or most of the time, they like to say hello to one another when they enter the class. Um, once they find out and realize that I am monitoring, I generally don't have a problem. Um, I had one student, and I just muted him. He's sixth grade now. Not because he was doing anything inappropriate. He was actually taking what I taught and expanding upon it, but at the wrong time. He was taking forms, I showed him how to make forms, and he was making forms. And they were, there was nothing inappropriate about these forms at all, except that he was doing it during math time. And that was inappropriate. So I muted him and told him, you know, we talked about it, and now he's back on. So it, there, we, I use them for more learning experiences so that they learn, because later on and at home, they're posting on Facebook and everything else, and it's to give them a little bit of experience with and that freedom to try without the cu the yeah. huge consequence of Facebook, you know yeah. what I mean? You can delete posts too. Yes. As a teacher, like if you see something you think is inappropriate, mm -hmm. you can delete it. So Marie just just talking about how she gets an email when her parent or her parents her uh, students post something. So on the left side, you'll see that like sort of hamburger looking thing. Mm -hmm. if you click that, you'll see you have your classes, your calendar, and then all your classes. If you scroll all the way down, you have this settings wheel. If you click the settings wheel, you'll notice you have notification settings. So if you don't want any notifications, you'll get notifications when comments are added to your posts, comments that you're mentioned in, um, late submissions of student work, resubmissions, invitations to code. You'll get bombarded with stuff. If you don't want any of that, you just want to be, you know, I control everything, just turn it off. 
this button right here will slide off. You get no email notifications. But if you want to know, you know, when a student posts, leave that one on. Just make it blue. It'll, it'll leave it on, and you'll get email. So if someone does make um, a, a post that's inappropriate and then deletes it that night, let's say, and then you get in the next morning, you have an email record of of that post with that student ID of who who did that. So that's that's definitely something you can definitely do. And you can play around with this setting too. Yeah. If halfway through the year, like this is too much. I'm just turning it off. Just go in here and turn it off. You can see I have everything yes except for down the bottom late submissions and resubmissions. The reason is because I teach 700 kids and late submissions a lot of times because I set my due dates when I think the class is going to get there when I'm doing my plans and then I forget to change it and I extend the time for them and then I have 75 kids posting. I don't. I know that they're late but I don't want the emails for that. So I just played around with that. And can you show how you got there again? Yeah, definitely. So on the top left, you see that little hamburger wheel? Mm -hmm. Not a wheel, but hamburger three lo uh, lines. Just click that and scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll see archive classes and then settings. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you click settings, you'll see it says email or uh, notifications. notifications. Mm -hmm. And you can just go through. The first one will turn everything off. And then, or you can just turn off like uh, individual settings. That's up to you. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, yeah. So here's the main, the main part of classroom. This is where, you know, you do the most of your work is the stream. So before I get into stream, does anyone have any specific questions that you want me to steer towards for the stream? Do you have that you've tried or you you've heard people talk about anything like that? I don't want to bore you by keep talking. If there's any questions you got, just let me know. You can interrupt me. Nothing? All right. So you can see on the left there's a work that's due soon. Your students will see work that's due soon if there's an assignment coming up. Maria does topics, which is really, really good. Um, and we'll get into how, how to do that. But if you have just, um, and she has agendas and reflections, and it will allow you to make, um, and, and you see she has you know assessments, class lessons, formative assessments, instructional materials. That's really easy for your students to find stuff at a later date instead of getting the excuse of I, I couldn't find it or something like that. So that's a new feature into Google Classroom as well, topics. Um, we'll show you how to do that. It's a really neat feature. And then uh, so show deleted. How do you get things in those topics? I'll show you that. Yeah, now. so we'll show you in, in uh, pretty much right now. Actually. <laughs> so this big plus button on the bottom right hand corner. I know it's hard to see on the screen. Does everyone see it on their screen? It, it, it changes color depending on what, what theme you have. So if you have a green theme, it'll be green, blue, blue, all that good stuff. And you can change all that, the pictures if, if anyone's worried about. I don't like the picture of the student desks. You can change the picture. I have some that are personalized, yeah, but you can upload your own picture if you want. That's you know, whatever. If you have a if you have a um, uh, a classroom about a book that you guys are reading in class or a mathematics thing, you, you can always upload a picture of you know To Kill a Mockingbird or whatever, and it'll it'll make the theme of To Kill a Mockingbird. There you go. Yeah, just like that. So you can you can customize it, which is kind of neat. Um, and the kids like the kids like wallpapers. Trust me, they like wallpapers. It the first also, thing they do on a Chromebook is they change their wallpaper. The other thing about the wallpaper is nice is that when you open Google Classroom and you have all your classes open, you're gonna see if you click. I'm gonna do it again. I'm sorry. Go all the way to the top and just go to classes. You're gonna see a grid of all your classes. So sometimes if you have a personalized picture up there, it makes it easier because we could scroll forever and it makes it a little easier to identify the colors, make sure that the kids are on the right screen, that type of thing. Yeah. I, that's what I find anyway. So, and that's a yes. Well, how do you find those classes. pictures? Some of them I took myself. Um, you would just go over to the side and it says select. Um, yeah, there's a select theme or upload, upload. photo. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if you guys see that as a student. You probably no. don't. No. Uh, but you can see, I'll, I'll try to zoom up on it from here. You see in the corner right here, there's an upload picture, and it'll say, like, hey, what is the picture? Yeah. 
you drag or drop it in there, or uh, select them. These are ones that Google has. Uh, so jelly beans and some brushes and a whole bunch of stuff. So that's up to you. That's not really like. So you'll be able to go stuff, mm -hmm. but it's kind of fun stuff that you can do to individualize your classroom. Yeah. Or you can just upload a photo from somewhere All right, so the big one is that oh, plus in the bottom yeah. right-hand corner. <laughs> That's where you're going to pretty much do everything in classroom. So there's a create an, assign, uh, an announcement, assignment, a question, and reuse post. I know it's kind of hard to see. I'm sorry. I'm going to try to keep zooming so everyone can see. Um, oh. And that cut off the reuse post. There you go. Okay. All right, does so everyone see those four? Yes. All right, anyone have any idea which one is the most powerful one? Which is the one you guys think you're going to use the most? Create assignment. Create assignment, correct, yeah. So they're pretty self-explanatory, but we're going to go through them. So a creating a sound a announcement, I can't talk. Announcement is, that's all it is. You're just announcing something to your class. Has anyone used Blackboard before in a class out of school or something like that? Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like it's sort of like Blackboard. You just have a blanket like "Welcome to the class." Uh, this is your you know third grade teacher here, Mr. Consoli, and we're gonna have a great year. Stuff like that. Or you can have uh, I know a lot of people do when they come in in the morning on your projector. You have like a to-do list when the students come in. You could always have this up on your Google Classroom as well for like daily daily uh, routines. Just try to get them into a daily routine every day. You know, welcome class, daily routine. So, um, I don't know what the daily routine is, so maybe pick your lunch or something like that. I don't want to, I have no idea what the daily routine is. Mine is drink coffee. <laughs> Make it to work on time. Drink coffee. So uh, there's two things to notice on everything we click on, on the stream. The first tab lists all your classes. And if you don't have any classes to begin with, it's just going to have yours default checked mm -hmm. right at the top. But if you have multiple classes, which you might not have, ne might have next year, if you want that daily assignment or that daily routine in every class, you don't have to create it for every single class. You would just check, yeah, that's all four of my classes. I want this on every, all four of my classes right now. And I'll say four classes. All right. So what students? If you do multiple classes, it automatically tells you you've got to do all the students. Okay. So if you do one class, you can get, you can do a subset of students. So, but for your announcements, it's mostly going to be for everyone. And then you just have, you know, here is what I want you to do. So you can do, uh, you can get uh, interesting with it. You don't have to be boring like I am. You can, here's the topics. We were talking about topics right below the announcement, which is pretty much just a short paragraph is topics. So you could always create a topic that just says morning announcement or morning routine. So your kids always know, I don't remember what the morning routine is, they would just go on the left of there where you guys see, it says labels on the student side and just click morning routine and it takes them right there. So let's say uh, this particular morning routine, you want them to uh, watch a YouTube video based on the book you were reading in class yesterday or the mathematic problem or science or whatever it is, you can link four things on everything in Google. This first paperclip links things on your computer or on your drive. So you have all these options up here. Here's your My Drive. Here's uh, Team Drives. I know if you were at the Google uh, Drive uh, training, Scott loves Google Team Drives. So you guys have, I know everyone has a Team Drive. So if there's something from Team Drive, I don't think you're going to use that tab a lot because that's you guys use Team Drive for like curriculum building. Um, so yeah, you can upload anything from your Google Drive or from your computer. Now, kids cannot use a Team Drive, can they? No. No. Because I was considering that, and then that option was not available for we them. We right. disable that okay. for students. Yeah. Okay. So there, there is some stuff that on the tech side, uh, we do disable. Uh, Gmail is one of the things for students that we disable. I, there's a lot of discussions on what to do there within the tech community and within the district. Um, I know like bringing this, the Chromebooks home is another, another big one that we've talked about. So we do discuss this stuff um, on the back end. And we know it is a problem for you know, doing a, you know, homework assignments if they don't have a device at home. Mm -hmm. How are they supposed to really utilize what you guys are doing in, in school? So we are aware of that problem. 
We're just trying to make sure that they're safe with the devices, and the devices are safe. From I've them. got a question. If you have your class for two things, you have it for math and then you have it for comic time, would it be better to create two different classrooms? I think so. I would. Okay. Yeah. So if you're if doing you have, different subjects, I would, yes. I would separate it, if that okay. helps. Mm -hmm. um, Especially since, I'm sorry, but you have a homeroom, it's your homeroom you have for comic time, mm -hmm. and then you have I have that's, math classes. Yeah, I have my homeroom for math too. Yeah, I would. I if I were you, what I would do is have a math for your homeroom, the other, and a separate one but for another homeroom, okay. and another. But separate. if you were going to add comet time, I would. Or, yeah, definitely. You would do it separate. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Does anyone have classrooms right now that they use? Yes. Yes. Is that what you guys do? You separate it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, think that's, I that's have three classrooms, but yeah. I was just wondering if I would put my comet time under my math. Or I would actually create a new. Classroom, you can definitely right? create a new one. Yeah, yeah, you. I mean, you could do it either way. My biggest thing is that I need to, in my mind, separate things. And even if I have kids, like I have enrichment kids that are mostly from one class. Yeah. But I still make a separate class for enrichment because it's easier for me, especially when I'm putting stuff in my grade book because I'm grading it through Google Classroom, and then it's alphabetical. So then I don't have to look at it and say, you know, is this something I have to put in or not? Mm -hmm. So. That's how I feel. It's a little bit easier to. Yeah, it's a great question. That's a good question. We get we get that question quite a lot. And if there are any questions you guys have on like, and I'm, this is more of the tech tech support side. If there's any questions you guys have on the rules for the Chromebooks or why students don't have access to a certain thing on Google, just ask us. We're not going to hide the answer for it. There's no like secret conspiracy behind why they don't have stuff. It's just either. Um, for, especially for taking the stuff <clears throat> home, that you know, we want to make sure that the devices are safe and what they're doing at home is safe um, and gets filtered through our, you know, our stuff. So that is a an, an issue that we're, we are, and we want to make sure that third grade can get the Chromebooks as well. So it does come down to you know, money. Sometimes a little money. But if there is any questions you guys have, don't be afraid to ask Joel or us, I mean, any of us. You know, we're not trying to hide things from you guys. It's there is an answer. It's might not be the the best answer you guys want, but it's there, and I'm sure it'll change in the future. It changes. So, These things change day to day. Yeah, and you know they are they are getting things are getting cheaper, and education does get discounts on stuff. But that's besides the point. I'm I'm sidetracking. Sorry. So this, <coughs> these prompts, the four things at the bottom, you'll see it all: assignments, questions, and assignments. Announcements, questions, and assignments. You're going to see these four things at the bottom. I, I hope everyone can see it. It's a paperclip, a Google Drive symbol, a YouTube symbol, and a link symbol. Where you can link a website URL. So if you have a, a, a who uses exploration, man, someone at Harker was just using it. Exploration, um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's a really cool website. Uh, who was using it? Jan Hill? I think. Smithsonian, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. And but if there's any like uh, Raz Kids, if you wanted to go this particular game on Raz Kids, you can just take the URL. And it, does everyone know what a URL is? I don't want to keep using acronyms. Address. Yeah. So the address at the top here. Awesome. Good. Why so you just copy it and paste it. Yeah, exactly. So if let's say you wanted to go to Google.com, which you know is not what you're probably going to, want to do, but you can just click this link button on the right and say what link do we want to go to? Google.com. And there it is. It just links you to that website. So if there is a specific article that you found online you think is awesome for your kids and you don't want them to get sidetracked because, you know, we see what their Google searches are and they get sidetracked a lot. Um, I love their Google searches. So you just hit that rather than type it all in. You can type it all in. You can do either way. You can do either way. I just, I just linked it. I just uh, copied it just to show you where the URL is. If I copy it and then I hit the link button, it goes right on my thing? Yeah, so if you click the link button, you can just type in a website right here. So let's say you know it's, you know, Raz, Raz Kids. You just click add link, and there it is. And they would just click the link. Is that actually Raz Kids? You need a dash. It's a dash. Raz That's what I thought. <laughs> it didn't look right when I typed it. I was like, I think that's wrong. I should know. I do all the shortcuts. Oh, boy. There we go. I can't type if everyone's noticed that. <laughs> and then they just click, click the link and boom, there you can't figure it out. Uh, GoGuardian will, will tell you. Um, and we have uh, Securely as well. 
which monitors their websites that are blocked. There's flagged keywords that are shown to us. We've already gotten some good hits that are just all these poor kids. <laughs> but there, there's ways to find out what they're doing. And it, and it sounds like we're trying to find out they're bad. But if you just want to do something where I want you to go to this playground website, you can go on GoGuardian and just say, limit all my kids to this website. Oh. And that's it. So I can. And it shows in Google? Uh, GoGuardian and Google Classroom go hand in hand. You have oh. to have GoGuardian uh, Classroom to use GoGuardian. Okay, but so I, I put it in GoGuardian and it'll go to my classroom? No. No, okay. Uh, You'll see. Okay. I don't want. I don't want to confuse okay. you with too much because I know Tracy doesn't have GoGuardian in third grade, so I feel like I'm talking about stuff that right. people okay. can't I feel use like, yet. Did they just do an update or something? Because they now did. you go in and it, I was like, where are my screens? And I did realize, okay, yeah, it's done. Yeah, so. Down. But I don't want to see their timeline or whatever it is. Yeah. Like I want to actually sit there while I'm working with a small group and see the screens and go, no, that's not reflex math. So there was an issue earlier in the year where it, the screens weren't working, if anyone remembers that at Harker, where we were just having a hard time. And it took them about two weeks to admit that it was their their issue. Uh, yeah, no, I know you remember that. Yeah, that was a pain. Oh, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. And then, like, two weeks later, when I was on patern paternity leave, they were like, uh, yeah, it's our fault. I emailed them. Joel, I'm like, it's their fault. Yeah. So they did update their stuff. Um, it should be working now. If it isn't, let us know. But um, is that something we signed up for too? I might have signed up for yeah, it. So that you, you just, I know I'm, I'm going off track here. Go Guardian, you use your Google account. And there's a big button that says login with Google. There's no other password. You just click login with Google and it says, all right, D Sickler, got it. it right through an extra says, like, hello, Donna. Just, I don't think I've ever done it. So yeah, I can, I can walk you through that. Alright, so we'll go back to classroom. I'm sorry, I, I sidetracked. I side can I ask a question about this? The oh, YouTube, yeah. you know how um, when you go on as a teacher yes. and you, you it'll approve. say approved or not approved. If, if I say look at it at home and I'm like, oh, this is a great clip for them to see, I have to go in and approve it before the kids can actually go in and see it or no? How does at that home? work? So it's, that is user-based. So if they're not signed in with their user account mm -hmm. at home, so if they're just on their their dad's iPad or something, it should be okay. Yeah, yeah but I'm saying, like, if I was researching something at home, and said, so oh, I want to oh, sign this for yes. my students, yeah, and yeah. then I don't know if it's approved or not approved, well, what I would do, can they still see it? Sign in to Google yourself. Yeah. With so as your, long as you're signed in with your, your um, what are, where are we going, school, school account, yeah. school yeah. account mm -hmm. then you will be able to see whether it's approved by us or not. Right. But do you, have, do you have to, like, today I went on one that was about all about, um, like, photography and dark rooms and that kind of thing that had to do with the, the level reader we were reading. And I'm always afraid to click approve. We can disprove something yeah. if... If, if you're like, oh yeah. no, I clicked something wrong, we can okay. go and, and click it. Like, okay. um, check yeah, it. I want you to yeah. show it without approving it. Is that because it's through my account? That yeah, so we just have a setting that says YouTube is scary. What is, is that? Is all teacher tube approved? Teacher tube? Yeah, there's a teacher tube. Yeah. There's, yeah. It's so not YouTube, YouTube, it's teacher tube. Yeah. YouTube yeah. Is, is an amazing utensil for learning, but it's also like not great because there's stuff on there that you really don't want your students to learn about <laughs> or, or you know, there's bad language, there's violence, there's it's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, so bad. our firewall does filtering of, of uh, YouTube. We have policies for YouTube filtering. It's not perfect. It's not going to be perfect. Um, if there is something like really bad, definitely let us know, but there's not too much we can do as far as like if they type in like a, a search there'll be a safe search and it'll filter stuff out so i know that some people use view pure yes um is a big one if you know you like a video you can take you approve it and then you transfer to view pure and it takes all the ads out and then you would just link that That's to your free. classroom view so we can show pure? you yes. view pure huh. We can show you how to do that too. Um, that's pretty easy. Yes, it's, it's simple. One of the things, and I'm going to mention, is just um, even if it is approved, I would suggest, and I always watch the videos before I show the kids, and it's not a big deal. I watched the character ed one, and I there were several of them that I had shown when I was teaching third grade. And um, they were good. I mean, they were all good, except that I got this one where they started in the middle talking about God. And all. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, 
I mean, I was fine. It, there was nothing offensive about it at all. The only one kid I had said, well, who's God and what's that about? I'm like, Ugh. so, you know, just make sure even if they are approved, that you think about the class that you have and watch it all the way through. I yeah. didn't realize, because it was one of those things where you're time filling, you know, and you put on, like, okay, go to the next video. Yeah. And just so you guys are aware, if something goes wrong, and Tim has done this, and he can't, like, the blue bars is not coming up for some reason. I've had a problem where I've yeah. added the uh, video works because the teacher account. Uh, there was no bar to approve anything. Yeah. And then the kids go into Google Classroom, and it, has, it gets, like, that gray yeah. screen. Yeah. I just emailed them, yeah, and, and then just, you were able to... We just approve it for you. So, and if it's really an emergency where you set your classroom up and you have your lesson plan, and, like, I'm, I'm with you guys. Lesson plan is... Uh, our job, not only to make sure things don't break, is to make sure your lesson plans and your lessons go flawlessly. With it, even with it, if it's not technology or not, just to make sure it goes smooth. So if you get to a link, it's like, oh no, this is like the main website, mm -hmm. main video. For, just give us a quick call. We can put a ticket in later. Don't don't be stressed about. I don't feel like emailing them. I'm just going to sit on it. Give us a quick call and say, I need this video right now. Two clicks and we'll get it for you. And then your lesson's back on track. So don't get flustered if, if you see that. We're here to help. So just give us a quick call. We'll put the ticket in later. That's Don't worry about the ticket um, at that point. We just want to make sure you guys can do your, your teaching. That's, you know, that's what you're so here for. If we do something, set something like that up, we log in as one of our students. If we can that out just to see what it is. Yeah, we have like test we accounts. Yeah, we have like a test student mm -hmm. account. We made it. But technically, it's not a violation of policy if she took one of her students' accounts oh, and logged in. Oh, logged in as a student. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We can do that. We can do that. Just to check. This yeah, because if I mean, if you delete his assignment, then, then this one, I, mean, I guess he could do that. Actually, the other thing you could do is, I don't know if it'll work or not. Yeah, probably. If I log in as a student, no, because I have teacher access. So like. Yeah, that, but that's a good way. Yeah. Good way to do. Go on like your student machine, and just like log in as a student yeah. and say. Um, oh, we do that sometimes if if um, we if, if uh, yeah. trying to think of we need to see revision histories of like when the student's typing and there's like an inappropriate word. We'll log in as a student and see what they've done. So that's not a, a violation. That's that's a good utility to make sure that they're seeing what you want them to see. Um, so just be aware of that YouTube is a great tool. Love YouTube. You can find anything on how to. I figured out how to change the toilet in my house by Googling something on YouTube, and they showed me what to do. So it is very powerful, but just be aware that there's some things that we try to block that we can't. And we're, we apologize, but it's sort of out of our control. So that's, that's YouTube. So if you were to do something YouTube here, you could just say, like, um, I don't know. Whatever you want here, math, and you would just search for math videos, and then you would just link one and say, "Yeah, I want to add that." So there's my link to Raz Kids. There's my math video, and then I can always put like a question here, and that could be in my announcements. Come in this morning, watch this video, and then play this game on this link. Um, does it slow it down when everybody's like, if I'm going to watch the same video, I usually project it. But if I had them watch it on their Chromebook, is it going to slow everybody? It's going to slow everybody. Yeah, so YouTube, it's on the firewall. So one of my, my uh, roles um, as, the, as a network admin is I, I, I take care of the firewall, which is, shows all the network traffic that's going out of, out of the network. YouTube hits gigs worth of data within an hour, which is fine because it's a great utensil, but it will slow things down, but we're constantly See, if I were to show access. math antics, I'll show it as a group, but if I have a kid that's absent, yeah. I'll but have them uh, watch it themselves. What I do, and because um, I do that a lot, I have a lot of videos, and I create everything that I'm going to use in my classroom. Every video or whatever, I show a lot of them as group, but then they have them so that the kids that are absent can go and watch them again, watch them at comma time or whatever. Yeah. I find that to be one of the better, e easier ways for me to manage it. We've done back end stuff for the network for Hill to make it a little faster. So do you put each of those in as a separate like assignment or something? Or do I do. You know what? Can I do assignments? Do you yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, you so, got more more uh, real world experience. So with assignments, what I would do, and I'm going to go to one of my classrooms, um, not this classroom. But one of the ones that I have, I have a zillion. I'm sorry, it's not what I want to do. Uh, 
YouTube and Park yeah. are the two biggest hitters. I know well, I even just, if it's not a video, if it's just a game, like I did, the I did fine. Jeopardy. The biggest Matt websites Jeopardy that, with them, that and they could are, play only that one game. Yeah, I the mean. biggest websites that drain the network <laughs> utilities are YouTube, CNN, Facebook are two big ones, and then Park. Well, they can't get on. Okay, Facebook, so this can is they? an example. Yeah. <coughs> this one here is an example of one of my instructional materials for week seven doing research. This first one is a document that is from EasyBib. It's a, a slideshow from EasyBib that gives all the information. And then underneath is a class presentation. What I do is I make a slideshow. And this is all the information. What I use the slideshow for in mine is more of a guide for me. So when I do my lesson plans, I do it as a slide so that I can go through slide by slide because I teach the same thing over and over and I forget if I taught the kids what I taught. So I actually put the links to the videos here. So the kids have my presentation. They know exactly what I saw. And then when I'm presenting it, the links are here. I just go through. Fact one. This is, I put the definitions of the words right in the slideshow. So it's built for me. So next year when I do it again, I just have to go back to it and I'm there. So I know, I know um, the whole thing is going paperless. Yeah. And I know a lot of people have like worksheets that they use all the time from previous years because that's, you know, that's what's worked. Worksheets are just they're proven to, to work for students and in classrooms. So I know everyone just got that email today about printing and copying. Everyone read, read mm -hmm. the six yeah. paragraphs there. Mm -hmm. So if there is a worksheet that you've used for the past couple of years and it's fantastic and your students love it and you find success with it, you can always go to the copier and scan it to yourself mm -hmm. and then upload it to your Google right. Drive and then put it into your classroom. So you can still use it in a digital way. So wait, wait, I can stop uploading to the school wires and I can upload to a Google Classroom? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, are you I talking about for your teacher website? I put my homework online every night. You can put it in Google Classroom. But then I've lost my parents. They already had that back to but school. You can use the uh, email summaries, mm -hmm. the, the guardians. Invite guardian summaries. There's, yeah. If you're, I mean, if you're more comfortable with doing it. Well, the it's website, on the school website every night. I yeah. put, I upload um, whatever they had for homework. In case they say, I forgot my workbook. I forgot yeah. my paper. It's I put, I put my presentations on the website. Okay. So, but um, so yeah. that's one thing you can do. But then also. Maria, one second. Sorry. Yeah, with with oh, the sorry. worksheet, if you upload it though, would the students be able to type on that worksheet? Then? So when you get emailed. It's a PDF. Yes. Yes. So no. But in assessments, we are going to work with something. There is, but then you've got all the paper. We can yet. try. Well, they print it from home. If you forgot it. But if it's yeah. classwork. Yeah. If, yeah. If, if oh, okay. We can try to convert it for you. Okay. There's no guarantees because the programs that right. are used to like convert stuff cost money. But then they yeah, no. just do it on loose leaf. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rather than that, yeah. one of the things you could do, and it's in the assessment part, but there's a, a site called Wiser Me. You could build your own web, your own questions. It's it's a, the best thing was the grades for you also, but you can make you, that your own copy of it on a form, and then you give them the link, and you never have to use paper at all. Does that make sense? But then you're just remake, you're just redoing it. Well, yes, but you only have to redo it once. Right. Like for me, it's just like instead of doing seven hundred of them, I would do because then I could pick and choose questions I want. And you can put in different. Right, you know, understand what you're saying. Yeah. So like, it's you, just one way. To, I mean, if you want to get rid of paper. Are you? Right. Is it like math? Yeah. Yeah. So if you have like a a math worksheet or an assessment, you can always upload the assessment and then um, have them fill out the answers in like a Google form. Yeah, but then you don't sense. see their work. That's the problem with the math. The right. problem with math is you don't see their work. Yeah, yeah. and that and that, you need that is something that we are aware of as well. Yes. Something that we would like to use. Is uh, I know here is anyone here from Stratton now? Right, so Stratton just got touchscreen Chromebooks, um, three for their classes. So in the future, we would like to see if the students have like a stylus oh, for yeah. math. That way they can you can see their work. Everything's digital. So that is you know we're we're aware that that is math is the the one like Google roadblock. English is easy. You just type. Great, just type that. You know history, science, it's something well science if it's math related, but. Yeah. You guys aren't doing like physics or anything, but 
math is like the, the stopping point where Google goes, well, well, what do I do? Well, pens aren't very good anyway. They're the kind that you sign your name. It doesn't even look like it. Right? The stylus on the yeah. Chromebooks? Yeah. I haven't used it. Especially if you have a child that doesn't write very well. It depends like on that. the stylus. Because I have, I have one that I yeah. use all the time. There's some other options also, but... I, I and Google, uh, Joel went to a Google workshop in New York. If you see him in the hallway, you can ask him about it. He played ping pong at the Google headquarters mm -hmm. and they have like massages on every corner and like fruit bars. You should ask him about it. It's crazy. <laughs> they, don't do, they don't have like work schedules. They just kind of like go in when they want. It's just like the movies where they talk about Google. It's amazing. Anyway. So we are aware that math is like the one thing that's kind of, you can do Google Forms, you can do some slides, but you need to see the work still. So that is something we're thinking about. Yeah. I know it's getting late. I want to add one thing just real quick. When you're doing an assignment and you're, say you're making a new assignment, you're creating assignments. Yeah, I kind of talked a little too much. I'm sorry. Um, so you can add, say I add something from Google Drive and it's a form, or, no, I'm sorry, not a form, a document. Okay, so I'm going to give this week six vocabulary, and I'm going to put that in there. And then see this right here. Make sure you think about this ahead of time before you just, now this is going to be students can view this file. That's what I want. But I can also have it, students can edit the file or make a copy for each of the students. If I make a copy for each of the students, then they'll be able to make comments and write on it. Yeah. Um, if I make a comment, but if I say they can edit, what's going to happen is they can all change it. And I'm going to, everybody's going to see that copy. So if you want something, if you have something that you want to keep the integrity of, you're going to just have them view it. If you make a copy for each student, you lose control over it, like if you made a mistake and want to fix it, but yet they can make changes. What? I find works well with it is give the students a file to view the file and then if they need to make notes or something have them make a copy of it if they want to make personal notes it, if it's a vocabulary yeah, it's, it's, it's up to you like guys but I it's mean, up to you I've seen teachers do like uh, essay question again we're going we're going with English but do like essay question mm -hmm. as a template and then just share it out and say every student gets a copy mm -hmm. yeah. and then so you could, yes that's up to you so the big announcements are not graded. Announcements are just a blanket statement, but you can add links. Questions are exactly what they are. If you have if you used Blackboard before, it's pretty much a discussion board. Questions. I think you can grade before questions. Before you and before you leave, I like there is a question in your Google Classroom. If you don't mind, please answer it, and then you can see what happens as a teacher. Right now, it says none. Nobody did this, but as soon as somebody does it. I'll be able to click on here, and I'll be able to see them, and I could grade them right then and there. Yeah. So leave it on that tab, actually. Yes. So you can see on here there is a point scale. So I can change that. Oh no, no, you're good. <laughs> I can change it to one. Yeah. Well, this is just. Like I know it's like a year before. It's not gonna really. And we'll do. Uh, me and Joel will do the, the big one at the end here for Thursday. I have a question. How do I make a new classroom? Yeah. So, okay. That'll be a new class. Yeah, we'll go through the Chromebooks. Yeah, and that's, yeah. We're, we're aware of that. It's, yeah. It is, it's tough. I know third grade doesn't. Yeah. So where I have three, and I want to make a new one. Yeah. But like the, the principal's got like, um, Chromebooks. It's not. Mm -hmm. And my last question will start out just getting people on that and doing that. And then the next one will be the next step. Yeah. Well, you can do it. You mean the Chromebook, right? Oh, yeah, but we're saying just to be familiar with the yes. Yeah, so I know the Chromebooks are the big sticking point. And that's all. Awesome. Awesome. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, and the ones that were bought at Stratton just created like that. The principal's budget. Yeah. So I know that's a crappy answer. Yeah. But that's the answer. <laughs> so. But okay, all this so stuff is what you so like an announcement. I can't say I'm not part of this budget. Like, like <laughs> um, um, if you want, I would say that was the envision that they had way back when every summer we had the idea of writing the science. So far, we've been really good at it.